prepared for pre-season in terms of fitness and you know yeah, I've, I think it's really important because I think um, you want to give the best first first impression um, and obviously you want to be one step ahead of the other boys that you're training with so I think it's really important to hit the ground running and um, give yourself the best possible start to the season as you can. How does it work? Do you both keep to a schedule or do you just do your own thing? Yeah, no, we get an off-season programme which we've got to try and follow as closely as possible. Um, so we get like gym routines, um, gym sessions and then also running exercises um, and then as I said you've got to follow them as close as you can um, but obviously you can sort of alter them a bit so if it's getting a bit difficult with the gym um, then you do what you feels best for your body sort of thing. Are the club quite strict in terms of when you get back into pre-season should they take your, your weight or uh, you know your body fat and stuff I guess no one wants to be that guy who comes back overweight. Yeah no nah, they're really strict with that as well um, so as soon as we come back we'll ha probably have a bleep test on the uh, 29th which when we go back um, just to see how much we've changed from the end of season to now um, and then we'll get our body fats tested um, so there's no way we, you can really hide if I'm honest um, which is why it's important to do the off season programme and um, yeah, give a good impression. Um, what are the plans for the club during pre-season? Are you guys going anywhere nice or are you staying in England? Uh, yeah we're off to Portugal um, uh, mid July um, for two weeks I'm sure um, so I think it'll be good to get away and obviously um, get close with the uh, first year scholars who will be coming up um, so it's sort of a team bonding um, tour but then also it's a chance for us to get fit um, in a different climate and then obviously play some um, Portuguese teams and then different styles of play and yeah, more experience for us The structure of the club is different to other clubs isn't it? I mean Mm. I mean, how does it impact the young players at the club? Um, I think it's just another person for you to impress. Um, obviously, like Mark Warburton will always have his players who he sort of likes, and then this new manager might come in and have um, a different sort of um, preferred player. So I think with a new manager coming in, it's just um, a person who you can um, go up and speak to and um, talk to them about their experiences in the game. Um, and yeah, just um, try and get as involved with the first team as possible. And just I understand you at Chelsea yeah. as a youngster. What I want to know is, what are they feeding the kids down there? Because they seem to be producing monsters <laughs> physically and technically. What are they doing there that no one else is doing? Uh, pff, you tell me. Uh, it's probably why I didn't stay there, because I'm not, obviously not <laughs> a monster. But um, no, I think, again, it's obviously being the best, one of the best teams in England, they'll have the best coaches, the best um, gym instructors, the best um, nutritionists. So I think they're getting the best, the boys in the academy are getting the best um, care all round. Um, so I think it obviously just helps. Um, they'll probably be doing a lot more gym work and um, a lot of training. So I think it's just natural really. And then um, obviously the gym sessions will take its cause. So I think they're just a bit bigger and yeah. Did you play alongside any of the guys you won the FA Youth Cup and you were Yeah, I was close with Dominic Solanke. Um he was like a good mate of mine down there. Um got boys like uh, Fikeo Tamori and Jake Clark Salter, who I used to play in, along the back four with. Um and then obviously you got boys like Ruben Samet, Carl Scott, Tammy Abraham, who were all there when I was there. Um and obviously it's really good for me to see them like watching them on telly, just to think like, oh, I used to play with them. Um, but in some ways, this kicks me on even more because I just look at them and think, like, I want to be where they are. You experience a lot, a lot of teenagers with what they go through, just getting released from the club. What was it like for you and how did you bounce back from that disappointment? Yeah, it was really difficult. Um, I remember getting a phone call. I remember it like it was yesterday. Um, I was sitting indoors. I knew I was expecting a phone call and it was either going to be a yes or no um, and then obviously a meeting after that to go and see him. And then I remember my dad saying, um, sorry Chris, it's bad news. Um, and then for a while I felt like I wanted to quit. I remember saying to my dad, I just want to pack it in completely because it's always difficult to bounce back from a setback like that. Um, and then I took a while out and just sort of enjoyed myself a bit. Because um, obviously the past couple of years it's been a real big commitment for Chelsea. So I think it was nice sort of um, get away from it a bit 
But then after a while, you just don't know where you're going to go. And I'm sitting there bored, like, and you don't know what to do with yourself. So I think it, it was only going to be a matter of time before I got back involved. Um, and I started playing sort of Sunday league football just to get my confidence back up, really. And then once I started playing again, I couldn't ever see myself sort of quitting again. So I just kept on kicking on. Um, and then after a while, I saw it as a sort of good thing um, that I got back involved because I just wanted to prove everyone out there that um, that it's the wrong decision um, and then obviously come back from it, which I think I've done quite well. How is it like combining school and football? Because your journey is obviously different to the guy next to you mm. in terms of the sacrifices you have to make, the stuff you have to do. How did you combine the two? Um, I think you just got to knuckle down at school um, to give you that um, to give you that freedom to go and enjoy yourself playing football. Because um, I know, like my dad was always keen on me, like doing my um, work at school and doing my homework. Because um, I think um, schools and football clubs have a real close relationship, so I think they often sort of email each other and see how you're getting on at school, see how you're getting on at football. So I think if you're not pulling your weight about at school, then um, it will soon get back to the coaches. So I think it's just important that you do your work in school and then on the weekend you can go and enjoy your football without having to worry about like, being behind on school work or whatever. So, so if I asked to go to your school and ask your teachers, what was Chris like? What was <coughs> Best student in the world. <laughs> Bedford came in for you. I mean, what was it like them approaching you and what was the whole process? Because it wasn't plain sailing, was it? No, it wasn't. Um, I said I was down here, um, North Greenford. Um, I was playing with the under-16s in the Sunday League and we was top of the league and um, I said I've played like every game for them and then um, it only takes um, a matter of, it's only a matter of time before um, you get another opportunity and my other opportunity was to go and play for the um, North Greenford Reserves, um, which was obviously a really good experience and also a big confidence booster. And then we played, um, I remember my first game was away, I forgot what team it was and um, obviously, I was a bit nervous being a 16-year-old, being in a changing room with like 25, 30-year-olds. Um, but they were really good to me. Like they took me under their wing and sort of like helped me out. And then I played a couple more games with them. And then um, I remember we played Uxbridge away, and um, Sean O'Connor, who was um, head of recruitment at the time for Brentford, he came and watched me and um, spoke to me soon after and said that he wants me training with Brentford. Um, like so, as quickly as possible because the season was coming to an end um, and it was about two, f three weeks before they signed me for a season just to give me the assurance that I've got time to impress um, and then because the season was coming to an end um, I played a few games with the under 18s and then that season came to an end and I got the decision that they wanted to give me a two year scholarship so I was obviously over the moon um, no, there was lots of ups and downs on the way um, but as I said I sort of overcome them and that's how I am that's where I am now really I'm going to ask you about your uncle Roy who is also a youth team player at the club how much of an influence was he on your massive influence for me um, as I said he always used to have a kick about me I used to go to his house in South Ryslip and go to the local park and play football with him and he always used to speak to me about his past experiences um, and then sadly when he passed away in 2010 um, it just gave me more of a reason to want to kick on and sort of do my uncle proud um, yeah so it's obviously him being at Brentford when he was younger it's just more of a um, it's good that it sort of runs in the family and now I just feel like I've made my uncle proud like doing what I'm doing now so it's really good and What advice would you give to any younger players looking to progress in the way you have? Just um Whatever's like, whatever you want, it's not going to come easy. Um, nothing in life's easy, I think. And f I think if it's worth that much to you, and it means that much to you, I think you just got to um, keep on going because there's thousands of footballers out there that have had setbacks in their career. I mean, they probably wouldn't be where they are now if they didn't have setbacks. So I think you got to take the setbacks with a pinch of salt and um, and really make it. Um, make it sort of motivate you even more um, but yeah nothing's easy so I think for me um, I always wanted to be a footballer so I was never gonna I mean I might have sort of stopped it um, 
for a couple of weeks, but I was never going to completely give it up. So I think just um, to keep on working hard and um, if you keep working hard, then I'm sure you'll get there one day.